We're going to show you out. that we are yet this day in our captivity from the curses. Jeez. This Bible, you can't, you can argue with man, but you can't argue with God. Right. Well, at the end of the day, a lot of our people want to argue with God, but this Bible has always been what it says it is. This yeah. is our life. This is the truth. This is the way to understand God. The Bible shows you who you are and where you're from. Watch this. If I ask you a quick question, my brother right here uh, with the yellow shirt, how do we get to America? Slavery. What mode of transportation did we walk? Did we fly? Did we run? By what? By sea. Okay. So, did you know or do you even think that those things are written in the Bible? Because the question would be, where did we come from and where were we kings and rulers before that slavery? Bring it up. Nobody really can answer that question. They'll say we are kings and rulers, but what land? Let's get that in the Bible. Get Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass. So Moses is telling the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt, things are going to happen. You have to make a decision. Read on. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy so God. So if we choose not to listen to God, reading the Bible, understanding what he requires of us, read. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So these commandments were given to the children of Israel that they must obey, right. that they must follow. Because guess what? The commandments were the wisdom of the Israelites. Right, but right. This Bible is our wisdom. But we, we tend to attribute it to the other nations. Oh, the Bible is a white man's book. The, uh, uh, Jesus Christ does look like a white man. But when we stop reading on our own, we rely on our oppressors. We forget who we are, forget our importance. So you're not black, you're not Hispanic. You're the Israelites that the Bible speak of. Right. So when we see our people rebellious, stiff-necked, still wanting to do what they want to do, this is where this scripture comes into play. We refuse to hearken to God. Read on. That all these curses. So all these what? Curses. Is curses a good thing or a bad thing? My sister with the uh, black shirt on right there with the one earpiece in. Is curses a good thing or a bad thing? Bad thing, right? So the Bible is saying if we refuse to listen to God, bad things will happen to us. You understand? Finish that out. That all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee and overtake thee. These curses will overcome us. Go straight to verse 68. Because I asked the young man with the yellow shirt, how do we get to America? He up. said we came by sea. We weren't just swimming the whole way. We came on boats, ships. But let's see if the Bible says that. Because this is going to prove who you are today. It's going to show you who you are, what you should be doing. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. no. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Stop right there. So the Bible says the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again. Let's find out what Egypt means. Because this is one of those curses, one of those bad things that was going to overtake us. Understand that. And because of our disobedience, that's why God sent us into this condition. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. So a lot of times people say that Bible contradicts itself. It can only contradict itself two ways. Because this Bible is going to be a stumbling block to people who ain't keeping commandments. Right. And also, you can't keep commandments if you ain't never read them. Bring it up. So that's why we're out here to teach our people who they are, what God really requires out of you. It's time for us to come back to our true nationality. Right. Calling yourself black is a slave term. Calling yourself African American is a slave term. Bring and it, it shows just how much wisdom we have let slip past us by not reading this Bible. Read it from the top. Read it, uh, Exodus 20. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Uh -huh. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So the Most High God brought the children of Israel out of the uh, house of Egypt but now it's going to describe that house. Read. Out of the house of bondage. So, Egypt was a house of bondage for the Israelites. My brother right here with the gray shirt. What is another term for bondage? Yes, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's another term for bondage? 
My brother right here, what's another term for bondage? Not sure? If I put uh, uh, chains and shackles on your hands and your feet, and I drug you from one land to the next, what would you call that? Kidnapping. That is correct. That is another, what's another word for kidnapping? Because if I'm kidnapping you from one land to the next, I'm not going to put you up and be a king. What am I going to make you to me? Huh? A what? A pawn or a slave. Bring it up. So Egypt was the house of slavery. Right. So now when we go back to Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to ask you a question. How do we get over to America as a people? As a black, Hispanic, and Native American people, how do we get over to America? Slavery. What mode of transportation? Huh? Train. We, so we took a train from uh, the west coast of Africa to America? Teach. Bring it out. Bring it out. A boat. But that's in the Bible. And we're going to show you that. Let's get that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So the Lord was going to bring us into slavery again. How? With ships. With what? With ships. So what are we reading? We're actually reading the Bible. Black man, your history is in the Bible. The Bible said that God, for your disobedience, was going to send you into slavery again on ships. So my brother right here, if being disobedient was the thing that led us into slavery, what do we have to do to get out of slavery today? What do we have to do? We have to be obedient. That's what we have to do. Right. So, let's read that again. Because they said, I'm curious. Our people are curious. All praise to the Father. Yes. So, once again, Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. So we're about to show you once again. Okay? But, hey, all praise that y'all are curious. This is how you regain your nationality. Right here. Curiosity. Right? So, here we go. Read that again from the top. Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And what are we reading? We're reading the Bible. All right? So I want you to look at this sign real fast and tell me if this is Bible prophecy. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So God brought us into slavery. That's what Egypt means in the Bible. Slavery. We read a scripture before that said Egypt was the house of bondage. You understand that? So slavery again, how? With ships. With ships. What people on this earth were brought into slavery on ships? Bring it out. Is there any other people other than us? Because during Black History Month, that's what we're talking about. Right. We're talking about the people who overcame those struggles after slavery. Right. Right. Am I right or am I wrong? And the thing is, I know my, my sister got the face on. She's like, what is going on? Because this has never been taught in your churches, has it? The thing is, your pastors are greedy dogs. They don't care about you. Right. They just want your money. They, they want to make you feel good. They're not going to tell you what thus saith the Lord, but they're they worried about the money coming out your pocket. Right. And if they miss that money, they miss that 60, $65 million jet. They're missing all their vacations, this, right. that, and the third. Right. They're not teaching according to the Bible. Right. Read that again from the top. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. chapter 28 and verse 68. Because no. this is who you are. The Bible has always been correct, but it's not been taught to us correctly. You understand that? So we're showing you who you are in the Bible. Bring it out. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What does Egypt mean again, sister? What does Egypt mean? Okay, we can get to that too. It is named after somebody, right? And that person's name is in the Bible. But what we're showing you is when the Israelites, let, let's put it in context, sis. When the Israelites were in Egypt during the time of Moses, right? What were the Israelites doing in Egypt? They were slaves. They were serving hard bondage. That's what they were doing. You understand that? So now when God says you are going to Egypt again, he's saying you're going to go into slavery again. Then he clarified with ships. So these are all prophecies that would, would bring us back so who the Israelites are today. So is right. this going to happen again? Is this going to happen? We're get brewed three and eight. Because no. you're asking, is it happen, Is it going to happen again? The thing is, it's already upon you. 
Right. You, we, we trying to separate it like it's not happening right now. We're still in captivity right now. Right. 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 You understand? If we're in captivity, how do you help bring us out of captivity? That's why we're out here teaching commandments. So you're still in captivity? Yes. Why? Read the Bible. We're going we gonna to let the Bible speak. We're going to let God be true and every man what? A liar. Because when I give my own interpretation, I'm always going to be found foolish and a liar. But God is going to be true. Let's read that. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Behold. Behold. So watch. Pay attention. Read. We are yet this day. This day. 2019, August 24th. We are yet this day. What? In our captivity. In our captivity. How? Read. Where thou hast scattered us. So we have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth through slavery. Correct? Yes. No. Maybe so. Yes, we have been scattered. That, that's, that, we can't refute that. We have been scattered throughout the whole world in slavery. Yes, we have been made everybody slave. And I'm going to show you how you, even you, are a slave today. Right, Read. No. For a reproach and a curse. A reproach and a curse. Is a reproach a good thing? A reproach. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Is a curse a good thing? No, it's not a good thing. So when we were scattered... It's, this was a punishment for us being disobedient to God. Right. The Bible doesn't lie. It's going to say the same things over and over again. Yeah. Read. And to be subject. Uh, this, this is the condition of your slavery today. Yeah. Read. To be subject to payments. You are subject to payments. What do we call those payments? Taxes. Bring it out. We call it tuition. Yeah. Bring it out. Because right. not everybody here has a scholarship, right? Get out. Get out. And watch this. You even had to meet certain qualifications. If you do have a scholarship, you had to meet certain qualifications that the people who gave you the money said, if you don't have this certain GPA, if you don't write this essay, 500 words or more, you don't get this scholarship. And if you don't get that scholarship, what do you have to fall back and pay? Tuition. Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. We're going to show you that we are yet this day in our captivity from the curses. This Bible, you can't. You can argue with man, but you can't argue with God. Right. Right. At the end of the day, a lot of our people want to argue with God, but this Bible has always been what it says it is. This yeah. is our life. This is the truth. This is the way to understand God. Right. But when we when we stick to our disobedience, that's when we fall off. That's when we start seeing bad situations happen all around us. Understand that. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. So you yeah. tell me if this is not our people. Till this day. Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So the Bible says as a curse, as a punishment for our disobedience, we're going to serve our enemies. That's why we're still in captivity today. Right. But the Bible is going to describe even more how we're going to serve our enemies. We don't. Which the Lord shall send against oh, thee. He said who is our enemy. Guess what? That's at the end of this verse. So if you stick with me for a little while, the Bible is going to show you who your enemy exactly is. Right. Then we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 28, 60. To, to continue showing you, read. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord is going to send enemies against you because we didn't follow him. Right. He said, you don't want to follow my commandments as my children? I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Right. You, maybe you'll do what they want you to do. Right. And then when we serve in our enemies, our enemies beat us upside the head. Right. Throw us in jail un unjustly. Right. You know, kill off our people, our families. Right. Rape our women. Right. Right. You know, uh, uh, put our children, put strange things in our children's heads. Right. But we don't. Watch this. Watch this. In hunger. In hunger. So, my sister right here. Uh, uh, Angel. Uh, what, what, what's the uh, management staff of the cab? Sodexo? Huh? Perkins. Perkins Management. Is that owned by our people? Yes. It is? Yes. So where do they get the food from? I have no clue, but they're in the meeting right now, so they huh? hear you. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> the word of God won't go out void. Right. Maybe it'll prick something in their spirit to where they start seeing this Bible as, you know what, that is dealing with me. So even though the uh, calf system is owned by so-called our people, right, who do they get their food from? The Bible says we're going to serve our enemy in hunger. Read on. And in thirst. In thirst. Water is a free resource. It was raining last night, wasn't it? But it said we're going to go to our enemies in thirst, like Aquafina, Dasani, 
Evian, we pay a dollar or more for something that's free. Right. That, so what do you bring? So what, we drink water too. The thing is, we are the same people. I'm not making any separation between me and you. Bring it up. I, I buy the Sony, Aquafint. We, we buy stuff to supply our school. Right. What are we talking about? We right. still serving our enemies. We know that this curse is upon our people. Bring it out. Bring it out. So if the curse is upon your people, why do we still drink the Sony? Why do we still drink the Sony? Are we going to go hungry? I'm asking you, because you serving the word, but you're not standing firm on it. I am serving the word, and I am standing firm on it. I just said there is no difference between us. I do still buy Dasani. I do still buy Aquafina. The thing is, do you realize that these curses are upon you and that you are not a black man, you are an Israelite according to the Bible? That's what we're out here to show you. Do, can you identify yourself? Because, watch this. Watch this. All right. African American, Native American. Who is Africa? Your own. Who is my own? Who is Africa? What man is Africa named after? Because when you name a land, right, it's named after somebody. Okay, Benedict College is named after a man, right? Yes. Is it one of your people? No, but they they help my people. They help your people. They help people. Let, uh, hold on, let me show you something. Cause we didn't get there. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, 48. Cause we, we you, you you almost took us off, but we gonna always let the Bible be true. Read on. Look, watch this. Watch this. Benedict Collins helped enslave people. Enslaved people. So that man who who actually showed us the way here at Benedict, he was actually our oppressor. Let's read that again. Deuteronomy chapter watch twenty-eight. This, watch this. Just watch this. Let the Bible be true. Read. And verse forty-eight. Uh huh. Thou for shall thou serve thine enemies. We're gonna serve our enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger. In hunger. When we get hungry, we're going to serve our enemies. Read. And in thirst. When we get thirsty, we're going to serve our enemies. Water bills, Evian, uh, Dasani, Aquafina. Read on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. These nice clothes that you have on. You're still serving your enemies. In the South, we pick bales of cotton a day. Right. 500 pounds. But do we own the textile mills that now harbor all that cotton that we picked 400 years ago? Bring it out. Do we? No, we don't. Matter of fact, if you look in the back of your tag right now, it's going to say made in Taiwan, made in Japan, made in USA. Does it say made by the Negro in America? Bring it no, it does not. We are suffering these curses. Read. And in want of all things. And in want of all things, you black man, you Hispanic man, you Native American man and woman, you're going to serve your enemies in one of all things. So, when I signed that application to go to Benedict College, did I know that I was actually going to be serving my enemy? Because like you just said, Benedict was not our people. We're still serving him. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, 
Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.